This is the second podcast for Chapter 4 for AP Biology. Um, first thing we're going to do is talk about two different types of cells. Um, this chart's very important. I'm sure these are terms you've heard of. Prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Um, main ones to remember is that a prokaryote has no nucleus and eukaryotes do have a nucleus that's surrounded by um, a nuclear membrane. Prokaryotes are smaller, eukaryotes are larger. Um, prokaryotes don't really have internal membranes, but eukaryotes will have a lot of them. There's no cytoskeleton in a prokaryote. There's lots of cytoskeleton in a eukaryote. Um, the flagella is a lot more simpler in a prokaryote than compared in a eukaryote. The cell wall, if it's present, is made of different material. The cell wall in a prokaryote is made of a substance called peptidoglycan. We'll learn more about that later. Um, in a eukaryote, it's made of cellulose, our polysaccharide. And then there are ribosomes in both, but they're larger in a eukaryote. Um, an example of each one of these, hopefully you know this already, a prokaryote, we're, when we're talking about a prokaryote, we're talking about a bacteria. When we're talking about eukaryotes, we're talking about plant cells, animal cells, fungi, and protists. All right, so in general, here is your eukaryote. You can see the nucleus. That's the key component of a eukaryote. And the eukaryotes have all of these organelles here. Um, a prokaryote does not have any of these organelles, like a mitochondria, ER, nucleus. Um, they have a nuclear region, but there is no nucleus. Ribosomes are present, cell wall, cell membrane, but no organelles. Okay, all cells are bounded by a plasma membrane. The cell membrane protects cellular reactions from the environment. All cells have cytoplasm. Um, it's a, the fluid part is called cytosol. Um, the organelles are found within the cytosol. Cells have internal compartments. They keep different reactions apart. They keep compatible reactions together. Um, and in eukaryotic cells, a lot of the organelles are membrane bounded. Um, membranes are very important to the cell. We'll learn about this in chapter five. Um, cellular membranes transport material in and out of the cell. They also um, hold or locate location of where reactions are, either in the organelle or on like the membrane of it. Okay, so that's about your plasma membrane. Um, here's a picture of an animal cell. This is actually a cell that's in the pancreas um, picture, and so you're gonna we're gonna be learning if well reviewing hopefully a lot of these parts. Um, the basic function that you learned back in middle school or in regular biology is the same, we are going to go into more detail. And then here is your plant cell. Okay, so we're going to go through the parts, the different parts to a plant cell and an animal cell. Okay, first organelle we're going to talk about is a nucleus. Each of these, where I'm going to show you the picture of what they look like. The nucleus controls the cell, that's what you learned. Um, it contains chromatin, as you can see right here in the picture. The chromatin contains the DNA and the genes. It also um, is inside of there's a nucleolus, and the nucleolus makes the ribosomes, um, and it makes RNA. Some cells have two nucleoluses, as you can see. The nucleolus, the nucleus is also surrounded by a nuclear membrane, which has pores in it, and the pores allow this RNA and, um, to come out. This nuclear envelope is double layered, it has a double membrane, the nuclear pores, it is connected to the endoplasmic reticulum, and it allows, like I just said, the RNA out of the nucleus. All right, ribosomes. Ribosomes are made of three RNA strands and 75 different proteins. Um, there's two types of ribosomes. They can be found in two different areas. They can be suspended or loose in the cytosol, or they can be bound to the rough ER. Um, ribosomes, what they do is they make proteins by dehydration synthesis. You can see them in the picture here and on the ER right here. All right, next organelle we're going to talk about is the rough ER. The nucleus produces the rough ER, which is a system of flattened membranes. The rough ER makes proteins that are secreted into the cell or inserted into membranes. The RER passes its proteins that it made through vesicles to the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus, which are also flattened membrane systems 
which processes these, this protein. Um, this protein then is sent to various locations, including the plasma membrane. Um, note that the proteins are produced inside the rough ER stay inside the Golgi body and transport vesicles, but are expressed on the surface of the plasma membrane. So if you look at your picture, here is your rough ER, and here is a protein that is made in the RF ER. The protein is going to leave the RER through a vesicle, and it's going to enter and be transported sorry, to the Golgi complex. It is entered through the cis face, which is the top part of the Golgi complex. The cis face is closest to the RER. Um, it will get processed here and then it will leave the Golgi complex to go to the plasma membrane through the trans part of the Golgi complex. The trans part of the Golgi complex is the closest to the plasma membrane. Okay, the Golgi body, here again, is the cis face, which is near the nucleus or near the rough ER, and the trans face is on the other end and that is near the cell membrane. The Golgi body, Golgi apparatus, or Golgi complex, all the same thing, collects proteins from the vesicles that came from the RER, and they modify in these proteins for use in and out of the cell. Um, they collect the proteins from the cis end. Um, they also form cell walls, another side function. They also form lysosomes. Okay. All right, next organelle is the smooth ER. Smooth ERs do not have the same function as the rough ER. Um, smooth ERs receive their membranes, though, from the ER, ER, which means they're just, they're touching, they're connected. You can see it in the picture. The rough ER has the ribosomes attached to it. The smooth ER is connected to that, but they are smooth. They do not have ribosomes. They're more tubular as well, as you can see in the picture. Um, they make lipids, so they make fat, and they modify proteins as well. They also have a role in detoxifying drugs in our body. Next organelle is the lysosome. Lysosomes are produced by Golgi bodies. They contain highly reactive enzymes like proteases, nucleases, and lipases. As you can see, they're all named for the different type of macromolecule that they break down. There are four functions to a lysosome. One is digestion of organelles. Two, they can kill the cell if needed. They'll aid in digestion of food, and they can also make cholesterol, which is a lipid. Some kids don't have lipids, or actually, that should say some kids don't have lysosomes, and because they don't have lysosomes, they can't break down um, lipids, and so that is called Tay-Sachs, and we'll talk about more of that in genetics. Now, um, there's a picture of the lysosome. You can see there's, well, you can't really tell, but there's enzymes inside there. Next one is a peroxisome, and here's a picture. Peroxisomes are also called microbodies. They're just like large vesicles. They're found in the human liver and the kidney. And they also contain oxidative enzymes that break down fat. They also break down alcohol and poison. So if you get poisoned, hopefully your peroxisomes are working good. Um, they give off hydrogen peroxide. That's where they get the name. Um, they give that off as a byproduct. All right, next organelle is the vacuole. In plant cells, it's very large and it's in the center. There's no inner structure for a vacuole. They're formed by the pinching of the cell membrane, and their function, main function is storage. They can store water, food, waste, pigments, and enzymes. There are four functions of the vacuole. The contractile vacuole, which you'll see in some protists, will pump out excess water in protists. Um, second main function is the storage. In plants, they also can do lysosome activity, which means they can break down proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. And they also can maintain hydrostatic pressure in plants. Okay, whoops. Let's go back and look at the picture. Here is the plant cell. As you can see, it's very large, number two here. And in an animal cell, it is very small. Mitochondria. Mitochondria is sausage shaped. It has outer and inner membranes. The outer membrane is here in the brown. The inner membrane is this tan color. Um, the inner membrane has a name. It's called the cristae and it has folding within the mitochondria. Um, this is where aerobic respiration takes place, which means it is making energy, which you probably learned as the powerhouse of the cell. It is derived from an ancient bacteria that was engulfed by a heterotrophic prokaryote. Um, mitochondria actually contains its own DNA and can replicate on its own. Okay, chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are similar to mitochondria. They have that same oval shape. Um, they have different parts to them as well. 
Thylakoids are these little green discs. Um, they collect the light for photosynthesis. Chloroplasts make oxygen through photosynthesis. They produce oxygen, which w did change ancient atmosphere. Um, they also are derived from a bacteria cell. They're found in leaves and stems, only in plants. Um, other plastids, because chloroplast is considered a plastid, other plastids are amyloplasts, which are white, not green, and they store starch, and they're found in the roots of plants. And chromoplasts are another plastid that we really won't talk about, but they, have, they come in different colors. Okay, next organelle, or actually, the endosymbiotic theory is next. This is a theory that states that plastids, chloroplasts, and mitochondria all used to live back in the day as independent prokaryotes or bacteria cells. And the reasoning behind this theory is that mitochondria and chloroplasts each have their own DNA, which is similar to the size of a bacteria. Um, they believe that they evolved from prokaryotes and then they took residence in a larger cell that might have eaten the bacteria. Um, they're still, still being argued about today. Some scientists don't believe it. All right, another organelle is the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a system of filaments within the cytoplasm. It provides structure for the cell, it binds the cell together, it provides highways within the cell for things to move along. Um, it tracks the movement for organelles. There are three different parts, or, yeah, parts to the cytoskeleton. Microtubules, which are the little tubes. They're hollow. They look like cylinders. They're found in spindle fibers, centrioles, cilia, and flagella. Microfilaments are the flexible, solid, they're not hollow, strings. They're found in muscles. And then intermediate filaments have many different types. Um, tough fibers, and they strengthen the cytoskeleton and stabilize cell shape. And this you can find in keratin. Cytoskeleton is made of protein. That is the structure of that organelle. Centrioles are associated with animal cells only. Here is a centriole picture. They're always in pairs. They're involved with mitosis. They're made of nine bundles, if you count all these yellows nine bundles of microtubules and they're near the nucleus. Microtubules are important for eukaryotic cell division. Eventually we will be learning mitosis as you can see the centrioles is what um, makes the spindle fibers. All right, cilia and flagella, they are made of nine outer doublet microtubules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and two central microtubules. Cilia and flagella both have the same structure. Um, they're very complex. More than 300 proteins are involved. Both of them are used for movement. The difference is, is that cilia is short and there's a lot of them. Flagella are long and there's few per cell. Okay. Um, outside the cell isn't just, you know, space. There actually is a structure. It's called the extracellular matrix. It's a system of proteins and carbohydrates that are actually outside the cell. It includes the cell wall. Um, next thing we want to do is label our animal cell. So if you have printed out the outline, um, you should be able to name any of these structures. So here are your answers. One is mitochondria, two centrioles, three vacuole, four cytoplasm, five nucleolus, six nuclear membrane, Seven is not on your diagram. Eight, cilia. Nine, rough ER. Ten, Golgi body. Eleven, cell membrane. Twelve, cisternae, which is the foldings within the Golgi body. Thirteen are ribosomes. Fourteen is smooth ER. Here's a plant cell. A is the nucleus. B is chromatin. C, nucleolus. D, nuclear membrane or a pore. E, R-E-R, F-S-E-R. Notice the difference in structure. You can completely tell the difference there. And notice they're connected. G, central vacuole. So in a plant cell, you want to say the word central. H, cytoplasm. I, chloroplast. Specifically, if you're pointing to one of those discs, that's a thylakoid. J, cell wall. K, cell membrane. L, mitochondria. M, ribosome. And N, Golgi body. And that completes the podcast.